Good morning, let's try it again. I just tried to go live and uh, I guess Wi-Fi is crazy. Maybe this is a weird time of day for Facebook, just busy. Anyway, good morning from Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm Debbie with Studio MDAZ and it's an honor to be here this morning with Craft Round the Clock and it's been a hot minute since I've been here with you guys and so I'm happy to be here. Hi, Linda. Hi, Brooklyn. I love your name so much. Every time I see it, I say, oh, I love that name. Uh, hi, Tammy. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Diane Newman. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I was live last night with another group. Uh, hi, Tammy. Hi, Andy. I know. Look at me. I don't know. Uh, we were going out to dinner tonight, so I thought, well, I'll just get ready now. And, you know, certainly I always craft like this. No. Uh, hi, Kathy Donk, one of my friends from, well, not from high school, but from my, my younger years. Hi, Cousin Kelly. Uh, Terry, thank you so much. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Sonia. Oh, I'm happy you're here. Uh, okay, gang, I've got to get started. Today is, uh, like I said, it's craft around the clock, and that's where I'm at, and Kathy's going to have, oh, she's already got it. She's on top of her game. Hi, Morello. Uh, hi, Susan. So we've got links up for that. I'm going to switch out glasses because I can tell those are going to be a little bit glaring. There we go. Uh, hi, Sue. Hi, Terry. Okay, we got to get started, you guys. You know, I'll go back and, and say hi to everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Second time is a charm. Uh, it worked that time. So uh, today, I just wanted to do something a little bit valentine -y, but you know, I'm not big on doing holiday stuff that has to stay a holiday. I wanna be able to keep anything I'm doing out year round because frankly, I don't have a ton of storage space, so either I gotta keep it out year round or I give it away. So um, thank you all so much. Hi, Viv. This is just this, all right, I'll show you. <laughs> it's because I always do. It's just this darling little sweater from Daisy Blue, the same place I got my sweater last night. And I haven't had a chance to look up to find out uh, if they're all over the country, but the name is Daisy Blue. It's where I got my sweater and the one I had on last night. And they had a special uh, on the 30th for uh, $20 a sweater, which was unbelievable because all the sweaters were like 50 and over. So it was just one of those things. Anyway, so D uh, I wrote all these names down so I don't forget anything. And now I don't know where my paper is. Oh, here it is. Okay. Deanna Nielsen, Deanna Neeson, uh, one of our Czech Savvy sisters, had uh, posted a picture of a mailbox, and it's her own mailbox that she painted, and it is gorgeous. Deanna, I was blown away. It was so pretty and so fun, and if I was allowed to have a mailbox here in my neighborhood, I would do the same exact thing with mine, but I don't. So I'm going to do my take on Deanna's mailbox, but of course it's going to be using her inspiration, but a little bit different than hers and probably a little bit more blingy because it's gonna stay inside. So I love to show you what I'm gonna do and then you can decide for yourself if you wanna stay and watch it or not. And it, you know, at least I'll show you how to do everything. So I've got this little mailbox. Kathy's going to have a, a link for it. It is $6.99 right now at Hobby Lobby. I bet if you wait a week, maybe more, it'll probably be on sale. So um, this is in the Valentine aisle, $6.99 Hobby Lobby. And I went ahead and base coated it just because you guys, it would have taken me uh, way too long on my 45 minute gig to go ahead and try and get it base coated and everything. So I went ahead and did that. And now we're going to then do a decoupage this napkin um, across the top of it. So it's gonna be beautiful. I'm going to do pink and white honeymoon checks down here along the sides. We're going to do a big flower, some bling, a doorknob, that's right. We're gonna paint this, put some words on it. And inside here, I always like to do something fun and unexpected. So I found this card also at uh, Daisy Blue, and it says, I cleaned under the beds today, and as it turns out, apparently I'm queen of a whole freaking lot. So I thought it'd be fun if you were gonna use this as a gift to have this just in here, so we'll cut that out. Or, um, you know, if you're a little bit more sentimental, I've got all kinds of this stuff, 
And um, you all, you can print this stuff. I printed this right off the internet. So Google vintage Valentine images and you'll get a ton of them. And look, you'll see it's just right off of my printer. So you can do that there. Thank you so much for the stars, you guys. I appreciate it so, so much. It's new to me. I've only been doing it a couple days. So I'm still not um, really familiar with how everything works. But I don't, I, I know that it helps us all the crafters because we go out and buy all this stuff. So I appreciate it so much. If you want to use, I just want to give you a couple ideas also. So that's what we're going to do. Also, it's going to be on a stand, which to me is the best part of this. So that's why you can leave it out year round. Uh, you love the napkin. Kathy's got the link for the napkins even today. We're on top of our game because Kathy's in the house today and we were able to coordinate all of this right away. These napkins are absolutely gorgeous. They're called blush. And, uh, but I wanted to show you, if you are like us and you're a McKinsey Childs, huge fan, look at how adorable this would be on your mailbox. Again, anything we're doing, you can leave out year round. And then down here, black and white check. Maybe you do the whole front in black and white stripes or black and white check. Do some bling around here, something fun in there. So I just wanted you to see you could do anything with your little mailbox. And I have one more I wanna show you, and it is this napkin. And uh, Kathy found this one also. So this one is uh, adorable. I got it at my grocery store. Uh, and so Kathy, I think has a link for these. What if you were to do this for Valentine's Day? And here was my, or for Easter, I'm sorry. Put this, the, um, put the bunny on the front, do the whole top in a black and white check. Maybe do something, maybe another bunny on the back end. And then you guys, Hobby Lobby has this doorknob right now, and it is like just a bunny, a hair. So I thought this would be a cute idea also for Easter. There's just a lot you can do. I've always looked at mailbox crafts and thought, I would never do that. I don't want it in my house. But then I saw Deanna's and I thought, oh, I can do this and I'm gonna do a take on it. So here we go. Let me get some tape. So when you're doing decoupage, you all know, paint it white, paint everything white first because it will make your project, um, because you're going down so many plies on your napkin that all of the color underneath is gonna show through if you don't um, paint it white first. It's gonna keep the integrity of all the colors is what I'm trying to say. So good morning, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, so you're just going to take some painter's tape or anything and just, you know, hit the back of your napkin and pull. And I've already got a hold of the next one. There's usually three plies. So I've already got a hold of the next one with that. It's just an easy way. I know some people put hand sanitizer or all kinds of stuff on their fingers. I find that the, um, painter's tape works best for me. So now I'm going to lay this out. Let's start on this side. And I wanna lay out where I want the biggest part of the pattern. And I don't want the bottom of the napkin. I don't want that green. Um, or do I? Maybe I do. That's, uh, but sometimes stripes are super hard to um, get right. So I think what I'm gonna do is cut that bottom off and um, right where the napkin, you know where the napkin starts to do some um, perforation? And uh, so I'm gonna cut that off, and I'm sure perforation isn't the right word for this, but uh, we're gonna go with it. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut that off. Now, the only time I use a pair of scissors when I'm decoupaging is when I'm doing, I need a straight line. Otherwise, I use a, I'm looking for my water pen. Otherwise, I use a water pen. And um, what that does, it just helps pull anything away that you don't want. My water pen's empty. All right, here we go, guys. So I just wanna measure this up one more time and make sure that I'm in the right spot and that I have all of my, uh, I wanna make sure I have the pattern that I want showing the most is where it should be, and it is. When I decoupage, I just do a little bit at a time. I've been so, so lucky uh, 
fingers crossed, prayers going up. I've been so lucky with not getting too many wrinkles. And I think it's because I started a new technique with decoupaging and that is I just do a tiny bit at a time. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Cindy. Where'd I get my water pen? Um, this one I got at Hobby Lobby, but you can get water pens two for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. And they have them in the Dollar Tree Crafts section. Now, I did hear that all of the Dollar Tree Crafts are going up in price. So, I don't think they re really can claim Dollar Tree anymore. But, okay. So, just a little bit, a little bit of decoupage at a time rather than I used to try and do the entire area, surface area, thinking that was what I should do. And I want, I'm using a big, soft brush, very soft brush. It's just a big water uh, wash brush. And you can see I'm putting on a nice coat, but I'm putting it on really straight and just nice, making sure that I don't have any uh, too much in one area. And then, like I said, just a little bit at a time, carefully move that out of the way because Lord knows I'm gonna spill something today, I always do. It's always worth watching. And then I'm gonna get this right on that line or close because what I'm gonna do is put some bling over top of that or it could be ribbon. And then I'm just gonna press down, press it out very, very gently. I'm barely touching this, you guys. And um, pull down. Pull the back down. And if you get a few wrinkles when you start, don't panic. They will come out. They, um, when it dries overnight, you wake up the next morning, you're like, oh, I'm so good at decoupage, I can't believe it. So it really does. All the wrinkles will pop out, but um, I hope you can already see how pretty this is gonna be. And so then, let me turn it around so you can see. And I'll have to stand up. And like I said, I didn't do any of this ahead of time, you guys. Normally I get everything done ahead of time, but I didn't because I really want you all to see um, kind of the whole process. And when you come to an area like this, where all of a sudden I'm gonna have to stop, um, how I connect everything back up again. Okay, so this is just on the other perforated line. Let me cut that. So in other words, um, like that could be a part where you might panic a little bit saying, ah, oh, now I'm gonna be completely off. But we're gonna add a little bit more of a part of a napkin and nobody will ever know. And um, I'm going to take a little bit of water. Uh, where's my other water pen? Here's my other water pen that actually has, this is the one you get at uh, Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna take my, my water pen and just I'm just pushing out some water. There we go. And you'll see. And what I'm trying to do is just feather. I'm gonna feather the next part into there so I don't want a straight line. A straight line will show everything. And I'm gonna do a little feathering right here. So that's that's what I'm talking about with the, the water pen. You wanna be able to feather it. All right, so let's continue our decoupage. I hope this is making sense. And again, I'm so sorry, you guys. Today is just one of those days I've got a lot of craft to get to and a lot I wanna teach you. So um, rather than you know being completely focused on your comments today, I hope you understand I've gotta be focused on my project today for a change. Okay, so same thing, just a little bit at a time. I'm just barely pushing it with my hand and all of the creases and everything I promise will come right out. So just a little bit at a time, do what you can and push as you go. Super light touch, barely, barely doing anything. So, so far, I'm hoping, I've got Kathy here, so if there's a comment that I need to address, she's here and will tell me. Uh, right, Kathy? Yes. <laughs> but I was hoping that we could do this close enough for you guys that you would see everything. Okay, so since we've got it feathered in already, I can go ahead and finish decoupaging. And uh, I'm just using Mod Podge by Plaid. And um, Plaid is, we are a Plaid am ambassador. And um, so I wanna plug them because they, uh, as an ambassador, uh, they send us free products. And believe me, I was a Mod Podge Plaid fan 
way before we ever got involved with them sending us stuff. So I want you to know when I promote something, it's always because I believe in it and um, I was promoting them long before they offered to um, help us out a little bit. So I appreciated that. Uh, Kathy D. Domenico needs your sweater. <laughs> That's funny. I know, I love, I do. Uh, I'm not gonna lie though, I bought this for my daughter. Her birthday's next week. I bought it for her. She's 30 something. And uh, I thought, well, I better, I better try it on just to make sure it's gonna fit her. And once I tried it on, I thought, oh, she's not getting this. This was staying right here with me. And uh, so I, I kept it. And so hopefully she's not watching today to know because she'll see, she'll be like, mom, no, you've got to send me that sweater. Uh, okay, so now I've got this part. Let's just get rid of any excess, push it all down. And just like that, we've got, look at all the way atop, around the top. Oops, I just got it. That was too wet, I got my finger stuck on it. So the napkins you have to be so careful with you guys because they are so unbelievably fragile. So let's cut, um, now I'm gonna just cut this part off and then we will use a emery board, believe it or not, instead of a sanding block, we're just gonna use an emery board and get all the excess off wherever there is excess. Okay, let me get this. This might be hard for you guys to see, but I wanna put like a big flower right here. So I want you to see how I'm going to feather all of that back in. So you're gonna rip, you can rip. And napkins are like um, fabric. They rip better one way than they do another way. So you just gotta kind of find out where you need to be ripping. And I definitely want some of that green in there too, cause I like that green. But because I'm doing a straight line and uh, I'm going to do the um, bling on this side, it's okay if I go over or under a tiny bit. And that is just about right. And so I'm excited for you to see when you blend like this, and I'm not trying to give it a perfect pattern, but you know, I, I want it to be a, a decent, match up, but I'm not trying to be perfect by any means. Okay, so I've got that on and now I need to get up into here very carefully because everything's wet still. So you wanna just barely push gently. And once you do that, I can't wait for you to see when you feather it, everything blends right together at that. So that's something that it doesn't even take practice. Anybody could do this, really, I promise. I always love to say if it's something I think everybody can do and not just, you know, somebody who does crafts full time, uh, then you can do this. This is a great way to do anything. This is such an inexpensive craft also. We're talking a napkin and, um, you know, a little $7 mailbox. Now, did you see, I, all I did, I took my water pen and that came right off, right where I needed it to. I wanna push that down and I'm going to use my water pen to get that little piece off. It comes right off. You guys, the water pens are amazing, but if you don't wanna buy a water pen and all you have around is, uh, let's say, just a paintbrush, you could just do it with a paintbrush and clean water, same thing. So don't, I don't want anybody stressed out about that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do this one little side. And then, um, look at the, just three hours later, we have our little mailbox all done. Uh, at least the decoupage part, and that's perfect. Okay, a little bit here. And I'm gonna go there, but I don't want all the rest of this, so I'm going to go ahead and stop decoupaging at that one point, use my water pen, kind of feather it out a little bit as I go and pull it right off. Isn't that darling? Now wait till we get the checks and everything else on. I'm gonna let this sit just for one second because it is really, 
Everything is really wet and it's, like I said, a napkin is super fragile. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. Um, all right, let me show you what happened. When I picked it up, because uh, this is how I want you to see, uh, nobody's perfect and I am the last one who is perfect, trust me. But I wanna show you how to fix. When you get something like that, you'll see a check on that. Um, is that something I need to know, Kathy? No. Okay. Kathy's so quiet. I'm like, is anything happening out there, Kathy? Is anybody even here? Okay, so look, I just had this little piece lying around. I've got no straight cuts on it. I'm feathering out all the edges. And I'm just going to, you just wanna try and match up your colors and look at that. And that's going to sit right on there and take care of that little hole that I made by picking it up with my fingers, which is so wrong. Uh, I, I know better but because I was trying to do it with you guys. And now you're gonna pounce and just pounce it in. Okay, and so where there was just a hole, look, isn't it awesome? And it'll all dry and blend together. Okay, so we got that done. And now I want to get all of the excess off and show you how simple that is. I'm just gonna take an emery board because this is a small project. It's not a huge project, it's just a small project. And if you take your emery board and just, I'm applying pressure down. That's what I'm doing, applying pressure down. And it comes off in a perfect, is that crazy? I'm sure if you're watching, you're a crafter, you, you're probably like, yeah, 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 we, we do this all day long, get over it. But um, if you're not a crafter or you've never done decoupage, I was deathly afraid of decoupage for a long, long time. I thought, oh, there is no way I'm ever gonna be good at this. And um, you know, once you start learning all the little techniques and tricks from other crafters, I thought, oh, maybe I really can do this. But that's it, and I have a perfect, if you can see, look, it's a perfect line every time. So I'm thrilled with that, and I hope you guys are too. Thank you so much for the stars, you guys. Um, I really appreciate, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it. The, the first night I did them was a couple, I guess, I don't know, it was a couple days ago. And I, I was so blown away. I literally had tears in my eyes, like that's how stupid I am. But I just, I was so <laughs> shocked buy stuff like that and grateful honestly grateful to facebook that they have that program for us um also once i start checking you'll see how easy it is to do a check i know this noise is probably extremely annoying but i really needed to do that to show you guys how perfect of a cut you get with just that uh it's beautiful as is it is kind of cute just as is isn't it Okay, real quick, what I wanna do is do one more decoupage on the, on the top, right on here. And um, let's see, I have another one of these uh, because we don't have enough of anything. So this time I'm going to take a whole flower and just have that whole flower on the front. If I was doing black and white check instead of pink and white, I would probably do this whole part in black and white check and just call it a day but I don't, well, I don't have time to do that much black and white right now, and so that's why I'm, I'm switching up and doing pink. All right, so that time it grabbed both plies, and you can tell, look at the difference. You can tell when there's no white on something, and um, so you just gotta be careful, and then just double check and make sure I did grab two plies, which you can see I did. So that just, that doesn't always happen, but when it does, it's like, wow, that was cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in here and I just want one of these big, beautiful flowers and I'm just gonna lay it down just like this, decoupage it just like this, couldn't be simpler. And um, then our whole front will be done. We'll get our uh, doorknob on and then I'll have time to do the check for you and show you how to do uh, the pink and white check if it's something you might be interested in because it's so fun for uh, spring. And especially, not everybody's into the black and white, and I get it. I don't know how we can be friends, but I do get it. 
it's uh, it's possible. And I've heard other I heard another crafter say last night that she really wasn't into the black and white until she tried it. And now she's looking around her house for anything black and white. Yes, if you're watching right now, I am live. If the uh, red button that says live is there, then uh, you're, you're catching me live, which is fun. Where are the items pinned? Uh, they should be pinned right on the bottom, right, Kathy? Yes. They are, they're all pinned right on the bottom, but they don't stay because we have new pins coming up all the time. And so you might have to just kind of keep your eye open. But look at this, same thing. Same philosophy applies. And uh, so keep an emery board in your stash, in your craft stash for sure. Because nothing could be easier than that. Move it out a little bit. Isn't that so pretty? I'm hoping you guys are loving this. Uh, I hope so. Uh, again, thank you so much for the stars, you guys. You so, so sweet. Okay, and I wanna do bling around here, bling around here. So the next thing, real quick. Oh, we've got time, we're good. I'm not gonna panic today, like I usually do. Uh, we're just gonna go for it today. All right, so here I want uh, pink and white checks. So I'm going to take a very light uh, pencil and I'm gonna start right in the middle and I've got my ruler, and this is a half inch ruler because you've got to base your checks on the size of your project. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna have these big checks on a small little mailbox and it would look ridiculous. So all I'm doing is uh, laying, uh, laying my ruler down and then drawing a line on the opposite side. Uh, easy peasy, the reason I start in the middle is because I want to have similar size checks on both sides. And it usually works out close, it's never perfect, but it'll work out really close. And now, because I've got a half inch, I'm going to do one more right in between. I'm gonna kind of line it up with that, make sure I'm straight. And um, there you go, and now you've got your pattern, really easy. Let's do the other side real quick so that we can just do it all at once. Start in the middle, make sure you're lined up. And again, this is not something to panic over. This is, uh, this is really an easy part. What gets tough is when you're trying to uh, do checks on odd shapes, but um, that's what we do. We have uh, in, uh, well, if you look on my page right here on Studio MDAZ, we have uh, hundreds of tutorials and videos that you can watch. Also on my uh, www.studiomdaz.com, I have a free major tutorial and it's free and it's checking 101 and you can go on there and take that tutorial too. So uh, that'd be great. All right, when I do the pink, I don't do a drag beforehand. When I do black and white check, I do a drag. In other words, I do some colors behind my checks. When I do the pink, I don't. Uh, because it just really, I don't think it would look good to be honest with you and it doesn't call for it and so I'm not gonna do it. But I want you to see the colors I'm using today. So you wanna grab, when you're in the store, um, I always recommend taking your project with you or your napkin, whatever you were gonna use, take it with you. And um, so then you can just line up your colors and I grabbed two that I thought, oh yeah, these will be really pretty together. This is, oops. This is a uh, Folk Art Wild Rose, one of my all-time favorites. Folk Art Wild Rose, and this is Folk Art Seashell Pink. I usually do Deco Art Americana paints, but I grabbed these colors one day and I've stuck with it. Uh, Angie, thank you, I'm glad you guys like it. Again, this was, my inspiration piece was from Diana Neeson, and uh, I just loved what she did, and I thought, I, I'm gonna do that too. So, I'm gonna throw some white on my plate also. The pinks go pretty quick, you guys, because there's no drag on it. And, I mean, this isn't a proprietary color or anything. This is just what I use because I like it, and it always works out well. 
Um, I'm going to put the faintest line in each of these boxes so I don't get messed up and do two boxes together and two checks together. All right, I'm gonna dip into my lightest color. Flip my brush all the way over and I'm going to dip or tap into my darker color. I'm gonna wipe it on my plate to see what I've got. Look how pretty that is. Two-tone is the way to go. And so I'm gonna offload a little bit in my check, the one that I have the check the uh, mark in. And when you're on the side like this, it's super simple. You just push right off. And look at how you get a two-tone color immediately. So let's do it again. Uh, dip into the light. Let me get that pencil out of there. Tap in your pink, the darker pink. Wipe on your plate. And then offload. Every time, offload, because you've got too much paint on that brush every time. And it's not your fault. You, you just do. It's just the way life is. And so what I want you to do is offload a little bit in the center before you go anywhere near your lines. Okay. And the one thing with the pink, unless I'm using a pink watercolor pencil, which normally I would, but you guys, I tried it earlier and you guys wouldn't be able to see it. So I thought I would do pencil and just um, make it as dark as I can. Isn't that adorable? Come on, where's the hearts? I'm gonna, this, this is cute and you know it. Uh, I love, I do love doing the pink and it's a nice break for all of us from the black and white. So you can see I'm just offloading a little bit each time and look how fast this goes. And I don't do anything else to this afterwards. This is it. Kathy, give me a time. 13 minutes. I have 13 minutes left, great. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is super easy. It's the double load that makes all the difference. And then let me get in here. Again, you guys, I'm so sorry if I'm not seeing your questions or anything, but hopefully Kathy is answering everything. Okay, that's really, really cute. Really cute. Um, you know, it probably would be super cute too. If you're gonna do one, you could do the checks all the way around. And if we have time, I'll do that. I'll just do stripes or something. But I absolutely love how fast this goes. Uh, let me do the mark again. Oh, I'm so glad you guys like it. I think it will be really pretty, you guys. Every other. And one there. Uh, offload every time. And because my dark is on the bottom, I wanna keep my dark on the bottom through my whole project. Um, so I probably should have said that earlier, but um, go ahead and offload a little bit because I had a lot of paint on that brush. I am using my Zen level two, number 10. I'm using a number 10. So this is Zen. It's a series 73, level two, number 10, flat court brush. These are the best because they don't spread. The bristles are short, fat, flat, and firm, and they don't spread when you touch your project. And that's what's critical when you're doing checks or stripes. You need a brush that's not gonna spread out, that the bristles aren't gonna spread. So I hope that makes sense. I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about once I get this done. And um, the only other brush I've used today was a wash brush to do the first part, the decoupage. Oh my gosh, so cute, so, so cute. All right, what I wanna do on this, I'm just gonna paint this, the pink and the two-tone pink. I just think this is what it needs. And we might even do white polka dots on this or we might do uh, a word. I haven't decided yet, but I wanna do my, um, look how pretty. It's like an ombre. I wanna do my uh, little flag in a beautiful gold. And then most everything else is going to be blinged with some trim. And then the last thing I'll do is the inside because I really want to make sure you guys see everything on the outside first. So let's, uh, I'm trying to think. Maybe we just do this with, uh, you know what? Let's do this ridge, this rim, 
and we're gonna do the same thing. We'll do it pink with the white polka dots. Short, fat, flat, and firm. I know, uh, usually somebody says, oh, it's just like me. Maybe I'm the one who says it. Yeah, we're gonna do polka dots, but I wanted you to see on a bigger space how pretty, when you double load your brush, how pretty it always turns out instead of just that bland one color, you've got to do two colors, you guys, always. I don't do anything without doing two colors on my brush, double loaded at the same time. It's not pretty, and it just gives it such a, a nicer hand-painted look. And it's also, look how fast this is. If I had gotten too much, uh, too dark or too, too much pink on anything, I've got that white sitting here also in case I needed it to tone everything back down. But so far I've been really happy with the color. See if I can hold that, there we go. Is this something you guys would do? I hope so. I hope this is something you would go out and get and try it with whatever napkins you've ha you have or just for fun. Uh, if you're a teacher, how adorable would this be in a bigger size? for your classroom for Valentine's Day. Are you allowed to, maybe you are, I'm hoping you guys are allowed to uh, share Valentine's in schools still, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit just the way it is for a second. Let's do this in our gold and then let's bling it out. And if we have time, we'll do the inside also. Let me get my gold. Let me see if I can open these. These are hard to open. How much time do I have? Eight minutes. Eight minutes, perfect. Anybody can do anything in eight minutes. Nope. You guys, these are so hard to open. Um, I'm using a liquid leaf. Uh, this is also by Plaid. It's liquid gold and it is um, oil-based. So you treat it completely differently than you do acrylic paint. So it has to be cleaned differently. And I just use a, um, I generally just use vegetable oil to clean it. Oil cleans, oil cleans oil. Uh, you, you are gonna do it, Shelly? Oh, good. All right, I'm so glad you guys like this. And again, forgive me for not being able to look up and, and talk to everybody, but it's funny because some people are like, oh, thank God, I hate, hate the crafters that talk to everybody. Well, I am one of the crafters that talks to everybody. I just, when I'm on a time constraint, that's the only time I don't do it. Make sure I don't get anything on my, my daughter's slash my new sweater. She will crack up when I wear it because I know it's something that she would love, but uh, I'll probably end up eventually giving it to her anyway because I do just about everything. But how pretty is that gold? It's just got a beautiful look to it. And once we get the gold bling on, it's all going to make sense. Because right now, I'm sure you're thinking, oh, I don't know that I love that gold, but you will in a second, trust me. And you will also go over top of all of this one more time. But I really am trying to wait till this dries. Uh, but I'm probably gonna do a sealer. Uh, I'll tell you what, I really do wanna do a sealer on it. Okay, let's do the bling, and then I'm gonna seal it and we're gonna cover it in diamond dust. And if you hate diamond dust, I'm sorry, but I love it and I think it makes everything look so much better. So let me get my uh, bling out real quick. Okay, so this is a roll of bling by Robert Stan, uh-oh, <laughs> my sweater just got caught. Robert Stanley, it's at Hobby Lobby. You guys, seriously? best bling trim ever because what you can do is cut it. I, mine has lasted me forever. These are $9.99 for the entire roll and um, it's 15 feet, but look at what you can do. You might only need a tiny bit or you need two rows or you need three rows, whatever you need. You can cut it to whatever you need and I just love it. So that's what I need. So I think I'm going to do just a I'm gonna do just a single roll. That's all I need right here is a single row. And I'm just going to use hot glue and glue it on. And that is what's gonna clean up that whole, um, come here. That's what's gonna clean up this whole jagged edge. Okay. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, look how pretty, you guys. That just took care of that whole situation. I love it. I think it, it really had to have that. And I think what I'll do now when we're done, I'll paint the whole back just in the pink with white polka dots, nice size white polka dots that I will use the bottom of my eraser to make. And uh, if we have a second, we'll do it. Where am I at? Five minutes? Four. Four minutes? Back of the flag. The back of the flag? Okay, thank you. I will do the back of the flag. Thank you, thank you. See, I can't see it, and I couldn't see it in the camera either, but I uh, appreciate you mentioning that because I will definitely do that. Uh, I, I, I'm always extremely ambitious. I want to be able to show you and teach you as much as I can in any time frame. So um, I think, you know, in my eyeballs, it seemed like, oh yeah, we can do all this with no problem. I never can. All right, so easy, got the bling on. Let's get our little, uh, let's get the sealer on, do our diamond dust. I'm gonna have to put the knob on real quick too. So let's do that. Guess what these are, you guys? This is a command strip, uh, a little knob from command strip. And you got two, I got two of them for I think $3.99 or less. And so you don't have to deal with the whole screw issue. You can just glue it on. I'm gonna glue it with hot glue today for time purposes. And now last time I did this, I had to do it really fast because the glue started melting the knob. So let's see if I can do it this time. It might end up doing it again. But I'll go back and um, re-glue this. No, it worked. Okay, so here's what I've learned. When you're gluing on these kind of plastic uh, doorknobs, the, the crystal ones, they will melt if you like really press them down into uh, paint, into uh, hot glue. Can you see? I'm starting to panic. <laughs> okay. Uh, those knobs everywhere, they're command strips. I got mine at Target. All right, real quick, I'm gonna seal it, diamond dust it. I've got two minutes. So the only thing I'm not gonna get to today, you guys, I'm so sorry, is the inside. But all I'm gonna do is paint it and like I said, put in uh, one of these things. You know, just um, literally glue it or decoupage it to the inside. So that's the only thing that we didn't get to today. But I do wanna seal this. And again, the key to sealing and decoupage is always a big soft brush. This is a wash brush. And so this is now going to uh, become my top coat. My top coat, normally you would do another coat of decoupage over top, but I'm just doing this, my sealer, as my top coat instead. I got one minute. Okay, let's at least get this one done. And then diamond dust, you guys. I don't care what it is. Diamond dust, it's like, you know, makeup looks us, makes us look a little bit better. Diamond dust makes everything look a little bit better. But look at, uh, now can you see? So pretty. So I am gonna do the whole thing. I promise you'll see it. I'll post it right away on Craft Around the Clock and on my page. I'm gonna clean it all up. Thank you so much for the uh, word about that. And I don't wanna go into somebody else's time. Mara with uh, uh, Vintage Retail Therapy is coming up next. And I hope you'll stay tuned on Craft Around the Clock to watch her. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the stars. And I gotta hang up now. I'm so sorry, but I hope you enjoyed today a lot. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.